So I'm really looking forward to uh, this year's JP Morgan Asset Management Round the Island race. I'm actually sailing on a big classic yacht. It'd certainly be fantastic uh, to sail on such a beautiful boat. So I'm really, really excited this year to be starting the JP Morgan Asset Management Round the Island race. Um, very excited about setting the cannon off uh, to start the race. So yeah, it should be good. So last year was the first Round the Island race that I've done. It was a pretty epic forecast and I was on a J109 with Paul and some uh, Volvo guests. So it was my first round of the island race as well last year. Uh, I did it on an SP3. Um, fortunately, when we got to the needles, we uh, had to turn around. It was a wicked to just take part, and my favourite bit of the race was the start. It was just very, very exciting. Especially in a little SP3 with loads of big boats cruising around and trying to avoid everyone. It was good fun. So I guess in tips for around the island, one that I usually struggle with is uh, is definitely to try and get an early night the uh, the night before. It is it is a long day, and it's. Uh, it's pretty tough getting uh, woken up at half three in the morning if you don't go to bed till 12. So um, definitely try and get an early night. So pre-race, I think there's obviously some a lot of, you can do uh, preparation-wise. The tide is, of course, a really big factor sailing around the Isle of Wight. So that's known a long time before. So you can do your tidal planning to work out you know, where's, where the big issues are, whether or not you've got enough water to get over the wreck at the needles. The weather can't predict that a long time out so you know 24 hours before or 12 hours before um, you get the most updated forecast and then you can really get your strategy what you think is going to work what's going to be the best way to go in the race. I guess the start of the race is probably the most tricky part of the race it's uh, it's very congested as you can guess with with so many boats of, of different sizes the best tips for the start is probably to work out which end is uh, is the favoured end and and then what your strategy is going to be going down the uh, down towards the needles. It's just just keeping your eyes open, being very aware of uh, the boats around you and how fast they are, so you can uh, plot your route down to the needles. So you could be out there for seven hours or more. And that's obviously a long time for one person to concentrate on helming, or one person like physically to be doing the main sheet. That's quite a long time. Um, so I reckon a bit of swapping around so that everyone like the crew energy stays high and motivation and concentration would be a good idea. It's uh, it's obviously quite a long race, and I guess. When you leave at four, five in the morning from the dock, it's usually pretty cold and, and sometimes wet and miserable. So I guess dressing warm enough for that part of the race, but then also remembering that it's, uh, it is a long race and you are out there on the water for, uh, for quite a long time. So I guess sun cream is, uh, is pretty important. Yeah, I think the trickiest part of the race, uh, from, in my experience, is St. Catherine's Point. It seems to be where there's a lot going on tidally. It might be quite obvious, but actually there's some big gains and losses there. And also a lot's changing with the wind as well because of the island and the topography. So yeah, really keep your eyes open there and be alert and hopefully make some gains. My biggest tip for the race would be drink, snacks, sunscreen, sunglasses. Be prepared to lose your sunglasses, it could be quite rough. Um, a hat, um, you know, all of those things that are really important because it's a massive day.